The world breaks everyone, and afterward, many are strong at the broken places. Welcome to Ruby Reviews Books. Reviews from a cat who cannot read. From a cat who cannot read. Ruby Reviews Books. Where Ruby, a cat who cannot read... Welcome to Ruby Reviews Books, reviews from a cat who cannot read. She may not understand the words, but she sure likes books. Today's book is A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. Set in the Italian front during World War I, this is not a picture of war, nor really about war. It's a love story. American expatriate Frederick Henry is serving as an ambulance driver for the Italian army on the Isonzo. As the spring of 1917 gears up for the 10th Battle of the Isonzo, Tenente Henry meets an English nurse, falls in love, and is smashed by a mortar shell. During convalescence in Milan, the two rekindle their love affair. Catherine becomes pregnant, and at the height of their happiness together, Henry is sent back to the front just in time for the devastating defeat at the Battle of Caporetto. What starts out as an orderly retreat turns into chaos as the Italians lacked the infrastructure and organization to fall back quickly to the Piave. Henry is mistaken for a German infiltrator and basically forced to desert the army lest he be executed. Despite this unfortunate turn of events, Lieutenant Henry is still able to make it back to Milan, find Catherine, duck the Carbonari, and flee to Switzerland with his pregnant lover. Reading this book after All Quiet on the Western Front, throws both novels into remarkable juxtaposition. Whereas Remark writes about the life and suffering of a soldier on the front, Hemingway writes a soldier's fantasy, the dream of fleeing a horrible war and its quixotic generalissimos, their belief that morale and courage matters more than tactics and strategy, their willingness to buy inches of land at the price of tens of thousands of lives looms large over some of the more improbable turns of plot. Yet, like any dream born of senseless violence, its realization is stillborn and takes much more than it can ever give back. Despite the ups and downs of the book, Hemingway writes with his trademark detachment and understatement. More emotion is shared in dialogue than the first person narrator can ever hope to express. The characters are also drowning in drinks. Capri, Brandy, Barbara, Champagne, martinis, demi blonde beers, and whiskeys abound in these pages, enough so that Lieutenant Henry actually ends up with jaundice. While there are many examples of the much vaunted Hemingway style of writing like an iceberg, where most of the story is implied through what's unsaid, there's plenty of overlong passages in the mix. Don't believe me? You try enjoying a two page dispute between Swiss customs officials about which town is better for tobogganing. Aside from that, and a few instances of casual racism, the book largely holds up to its literary esteem, though I don't love it. I give it three stars out of five. Let's see what Ruby thinks. One, is that it? Up oh, two, three, shake it off, four, Five, six, well, there you have it. A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. Rated three stars, six rubs, a lick of the chops, and a shake of the head. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on what we should read next, please leave a comment. 